Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial will show you how to paint a mermaid tail on an 11 by 14 inch canvas with acrylic paints. I'm going to go ahead and get started right away here. I am using one of those stretched 11 by 14 canvases and I have three colors on my palette. I have titanium white, bright aqua green, and phthalo blue. Of course, all the colors and brushes that I use are in the description of this tutorial. So for this lovely background. I'm going to be using this three-quarter wash brush and I'll also be using this blender brush. This is actually a makeup brush and I will be using it to blend the paint, um, the strokes into soft smooth strokes for a blended background. And I will demonstrate for you how to do that. So I'm going to be painting the entire background first with these three ocean colors and what I'm doing is I'm dipping my wash brush, that's this flat brush, in the water first, kind of tapping it dry. And I'm gonna double load it in the phthalo blue and the aqua. And I'm gonna do these textured strokes, these angular strokes. So I'm kind of painting in different angles and I'm letting that blue and the aqua blend together. And then I'll grab some white. So the trick is to not blend it not paint it over to where all the colors all turn the same color. It just to kind of leaves colors not blended together. And then I'm gonna grab my blender brush and I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna lightly, just use the tip of the brush, lightly paint in circles and it's gonna blend those colors together into this dreamy looking blue and aqua and white combination. So I'm doing that in segments because if I painted the whole thing first and then tried to blend it, it would, um, the paint would dry by the time it was, it's time to blend. So I'm doing this in um, different segments. So I'm doing another area um, with the same technique. So this time I grab blue and white because I want my colors to be different throughout the um, background. I don't want it all to turn the same color everywhere. And I'll grab a little bit of aqua. So it doesn't really matter. You can just grab colors and you can um, do a little different from me. It doesn't matter. Then you just grab your blender brush and you take it, use the tip of it and paint in circular strokes and um, lightly blend those strokes. It smooths out those harsh brush, brush strokes and gives it a very smooth, pretty uh, effect. So you're just going to keep repeating this technique until you fill up the entire canvas. The video is going to speed up here just slightly, but uh, like I always say, press pause when you need to. And I'm going to go silent here for just a bit. Just keep in mind, um, try not to get all the colors to be the same. Try to vary your darks and turquoises and whites in different areas. And make sure you're using just the tip of that blender brush, not a lot of pressure on that brush. So hold lightly, paint in circular strokes, and that'll make your acrylic paint look nice and soft and pretty. When you're done with the background, you're going to need to wait for it to dry. You can use a hair dryer or take a break. Mine dried fairly quickly because of how thin the layer of paint is. But when your canvas is dry, you're going to go ahead and um, draw the mermaid tail. So I'm using a piece of chalk and I'm going to draw the tail starting uh, towards the bottom of our um, kind of the bottom left area of the canvas and I'm just going to do a diagonal line going up and it's going to curve and hit the top of the canvas, kind of the top middle of the canvas. And then I'm going to make the right side of the curve where her, her waist is and it's going to curve down and get narrow as it goes down. And this bottom piece is going to curve at the bottom. I'm making this a little bit darker.
So the nice thing about chalk is that it erases with water. So if you mess up, you can um, get a, a baby wipe or a wet paintbrush and erase it. And then the bottom piece curves. So you can see how it kind of goes down and then at an angle towards the left. And then I'm going to do her fin. So this is going to curve outwards towards the left and then curve down. And then I'm going to do these wavy lines that go not all the way to that um, bottom part, but it stops kind of in the middle. So I'm going to do another curve down, more wavy lines going upwards. So this part of the tail, you can see there's two bumps right there in the middle, and then it curves down. It kind of goes to a point on each side of that fin. So there's the basic drawing of our mermaid tail. And of course, when we paint this in, we can adjust it if we need it. If we needed it to be bigger or smaller, that's the nice thing about painting this in. And our chalk will erase later on too. Um, if you would like to download a template for this mermaid tail, I have one for you linked to this video. So you can download that template and use that as um, with some transfer paper and you could transfer that to the canvas if you're having a hard time with the drawing. But that's it for the basic shape of our mermaid tail and we are going to move on to the painting part of it. So I'll be using my three quarter flat brush again for this and two colors, dioxazine purple and titanium white. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to load that into both of those colors, um, white and purple. So about equal amounts of the white and the purple. And then I'm gonna start painting the tail. So when I do this tail, the outer right and outer left part of the tail is darker and the middle part of the tail is gonna be slightly lighter. So I'll be using, uh, be mixing lighter colors as I work towards the middle. But you wanna do these in long contouring strokes. So in the direction that um, the shape is going in is what I'm filling in. So I'm using the full width of the brush and I'm, or um, when I go on the side, I'm using the tip of the brush to kind of cut in that shape. But um, you can see how it curves in the direction of her fin. And then when you start filling in the middle, you want to grab a little bit more white so that it is slightly lighter in the middle. So I've grabbed more white on the tip of my brush and of course more purple too. We don't want it to turn solid white, just a lighter purple. So that white will mix with that purple and it'll turn into a lighter purple and I'm blending it on the canvas. So I'm doing strokes up and down, letting those colors blend. If you didn't want to do the blending thing, if you would rather just paint it a solid color because you're simplifying this or maybe you're doing this with this painting with kids and you don't really want to make it tricky with the blending thing, that's okay. Um, you can just paint it a solid color and we'll be doing uh, mermaid texture scales later on so it'll give the mermaid fin a little bit more texture and um, interest to it. So um, there's a lot of ways you can simplify these paintings and especially if you are having troubles with the blending. But what I'm doing here is I'm just taking the purple down the tip of my brush and I'm really defining that shape. So outlining it and you can still see my chalk line. I adjusted my fin so it was slightly smaller than my chalk line and that's okay. You can do that too. If that's what you ended up doing. Or sometimes when we paint, it goes outside of the chalk line because we want to adjust it a certain way, and that's okay too. The chalk will erase with a wet paintbrush or a baby wipe. I am actually going to switch to a number eight round brush here just because we have a smaller area down below in this area and curvy area. Um, it, it's much easier to paint curved areas with a round brush than it is with that big flat brush. But I'm just taking that brush and kind of finishing off that area and um, kind of doing the, some touch-ups here on the side um, with that round brush that I couldn't get in with that flat brush. Just make sure the edges are have that nice dark dioxazine purple to it. I'm going to go ahead and erase the outer parts of my chalk lines here. So this is a baby wipe and um, this tends to work better with erasing the chalk than the wet paintbrush I find um, because you can control it more and it's also not allowing the water from the wet paintbrush to kind of spill on your painting and get all 
um, drippy, if that makes sense. But I'm just taking that baby wipe and wiping off any residual chalk lines that are outside of the mermaid painting. Just be really careful when because the purple's still wet, you don't want the baby wipe to smear the painting at all. So you, maybe best to wait for it to dry or um, just be really careful. And then I'm just going to go ahead and paint her fin here or her, her tail, her fin, um, the end of her mermaid tail. And uh, this piece right here is lighter towards the top. A little bit of water on my brush to get, get that paint to flow a little bit better. But this is a white with a little bit of dioxazine purple. So super, super bright or super, super light purple. And her fin is lightest towards the top and it gets gradually darker towards the bottom. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'll be blending the purple so that it gets darker and darker towards the bottom. So I'm adding more purple to the brush. And I'm doing the darker purple towards the bottom. So I'm taking my brush and I'm outlining her shape of the fin and then I'm pressing a little bit harder towards the middle, blending those colors on the canvas. They don't have to be a, like a perfect gradient of light to purple. It can vary. You can let those paints just kind of flow and do their thing. It's a flowy fin, so the colors don't have to be exactly perfect in this area. So I'm taking that white and kind of blending it back down into that lighter purple towards the middle, flowing strokes. I'm going to load my palette with some more of the dioxazine purple, whatever's left in this poor tube of paint. And then having a towel handy to wipe your brush, especially when you're doing these blending from darks to lights, um, is pretty helpful. So I just want to take this the darker purple and kind of outline the bottom part of her tail fin, just so this piece down here is uh, more defined. And then this curve right here, a little bit more defined. And sometimes with the blending, um, it helps to just take your finger and you can just kind of smear it. I'm going to wipe my brush off again. Um, I'm going to do those white line piece um, texture things on the fin. I'm just smearing the paint a little bit more in this area right here. But I'm going to freshen up some titanium white. So white that's not been mixed with the purple at all. So it's just the white. Wipe the brush off. You can even rinse it if there's too much purple on it, it seems. But I'm just going to take that white and just loosely outline the top part of it. So that's nice and bright and white. Then I'm going to paint the line textures that are on her fin. So load your brush in just the white. Get that twisted and kind of at the tip of the brush. In the middle piece, I did these two curved parts, but then I'm just doing these flowy lines that go um, from that center curved piece and they're just kind of flowing outwards towards the bottom parts of the fins. So just very loose white flowy lines that go from the bottom curved piece uh, flowing outwards towards the bottom parts of the fin of the tail fin and, and also the point. So and it's okay if that purple is not dry all the way and if your white ends up blending with that um, purple below, that's okay. It, it helps, gives it some color variation. And I'm just touching up this curved part right here. Make sure that's um, nice and defined and that white's not overlapping that at all. Then I'm just going to take my baby wipe again and wipe off any of this residual 
chalk that may be showing. So I'm just getting in there very close, trying not to smear the paint at all. So whatever chalk lines are left, I can just wipe all those away. And we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next step. So I'm gonna demonstrate how to do the seaweed in this painting. And the seaweed was done with the Hooker's Green Hue Permanent Color. You can use any dark green. It doesn't have to be that exact shade of green and also some titanium white. I'm gonna go ahead on my palette and mix about equal amounts of the green and the white. So I'm gonna make different tints of this green. And then I made a second tint that's a little bit darker. And then of course we have that super dark green. So I have three different tints of green that I'm working with here. And with these seaweed, uh, we want it to look nice and flowy and we want our color to kind of shift with the seaweed, the light may be hitting it different ways. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm doing the curved shape and it goes to a point and then it um, another curved shape starts out of that one and that piece goes to a point. And so I'm just varying the green. So I'm loading my brush in some darker green sometimes, then I'm loading it into some lighter green other times and it just flows up towards the top. I know that got cut off there. I'll get this zoomed out for you in just a second here. Um, but you're just making sure that your color kind of varies. You can take that white and kind of blend it down a little bit. But there's our first strand of seaweed and I'll go ahead and paint the second strand here. So same thing, you start at the bottom, flowy, and then it, let's have this one kind of curve towards the left and let's have this one overlap the first one we made. So I'm just taking it a sharp turn towards the left with this piece going off the canvas. And then we'll have this piece come back around towards the right and it's gonna go to a point. So there's our second seaweed piece. And we can do more if you like that style of seaweed, but I'm gonna do a different style right now with um, the green. And you can even go a shade darker with this by grabbing some dioxazine purple and mixing that with the green. We have a limited color palette with this painting, but that doesn't mean that we can't mix colors together still. Um, so that green was made darker by mixing the purple into it. So that got a different darker shade. So that seaweed was just a, a line curved line with some rounded leaves. So I just use the tip of the brush to kind of create some rounded leaves. And then I'm just gonna do this style here in this area, another flowy type of seaweed. A second one that's kind of smaller. And then I'm going to do another seaweed piece. This one's going to have leaves. So I did the middle piece and then I'm going to make some the basic leaf shapes that are coming out of this middle piece. Kind of vary some of those greens, taking that and dipping it in different levels of those greens, lights and darks, and that really makes your your seaweed pieces look like the light is hitting it differently. Gives it a lot of variety to look at. So next, I'm going to do some fun splash with this mermaid and I whipped out my toothbrush that I use for a lot of my paintings. I just love doing little splatters. It creates such a pretty effect 
so many different things with the splatters, stars, snow, and now underwater splashes. Um, but you basically just load the white on your brush, a little bit watered down. You wanna test it off to the side first until you feel comfortable with the way it's going to splatter because you don't wanna ruin your painting by accidentally doing it too thick or too thin. Um, but I did the splatters mostly underneath the tail but a little bit all throughout the painting so you can kind of see what that looks like um, but I will also be doing the um, different bubbles so with the round brush so this is a smaller round brush this is a number four round brush and I'm just doing some strings of bubbles in the bottom area so I'm pressing or I'm making dots with the round brush and those dots are getting kind of smaller and in a stringed area going curved upwards. And then this is really a really pretty effect, I think. Um, on her fin, and this, I'll be doing this to the entire tail too, but I'm just doing clusters of little dots and some of the dots are bigger, some are smaller, and it's creating kind of a sparkle effect on her tail fin. And just um, kind of all throughout, just the random little clusters of dots. And then I did a bunch of little dots towards the top part of her fin. I'm also going to do the circle bubbles and this is a 5-0 round brush so it's a really tiny brush that way I can get these small lines and basically I'm just painting circles different sizes in different areas so you can do that all throughout I'm going to not do too many right now because I know I'm going to do a seahorse and a fish and so I don't want to do bubbles and then not have the placement of the seahorse correct or we don't know where that seahorse is going to be right now we're just going to do bubbles later after we put that seahorse in and so with our mr seahorse uh we're going to draw him with pencil first so starting with a circle i'm going to make my circle slightly bigger and more towards the left so a a circle for his head I'm just using a regular pencil. You can use a chalk pencil. I wouldn't use the thick chalk because the lines are supposed to be thin on this seahorse. And our seahorse curves. So we have the back that kind of curves. It curves inwards. And then we have our tail though. So a spiral line for the tail. And then we have our head, our nose of the seahorse trumpets outwards. And then I'm gonna take this line and it's gonna go forward, but then it's gonna quickly go to the left for the tail. So there's his belly. And then our side fin that's sticking out towards the left. And then the spikes that are on his head that go all the way down his back. So these are just kind of curved triangular shapes that go down to the tail. Next, I will paint the seahorse in solid white. So you can use any brush. If you wanna use that five zero brush, you can. You, um, this is the number four round brush. And the reason why I'm painting it white first is just to white the shape out first. Um, that way, whatever color I paint my seahorse in, it's gonna have better coverage against the background. So just go ahead and paint your seahorse shape solid white.
and I didn't do these spikes on the seahorse's back with the white um, so I painted those in later the next thing I did was a fish and instead of just drawing the fish I'm just kind of winging it here um, but I did a circle shape and then um, it kind of pointed out for the nose of the fish I did his back tail fin and his top and bottom fin the next part of this painting I will be drawing in the scales so this is a golden sharpie you can use a paint pen uh, literally any color paint pen it just has to show up against the dark color of the purple and the gold shows up very nicely and so what I'm doing here is I'm doing half circle shapes across the top part you can see um, how it kind of shines in the light there and then when you do your your next row you want your half circle shapes to go staggered in between the first row and you're just going to repeat that down towards your entire mermaid fin so you just want to keep doing consistent half circle shapes and you're staggering it so your next row those that first one's going to start in between the other one as you go down and the mermaid tail curves your mermaid tail texture scales will slightly curve if that is kind of tricky for you you can keep it consistently going the same direction all throughout but you can see that um, it's going to start to curve towards the left and you're going to just do the best you can to get your scales to curve as well and the scales also get slightly smaller um, as they get to the bottom part so i'm going to speed this video up because this step takes quite a bit of time, but press pause when you need to. Next I'll be doing the little sparkle effect like I did on the tail fin. So I'm gonna freshen up some titanium white. Use my number four round brush for this. And I'm basically going to paint little clusters of dots kind of all throughout her tail. So little clusters of threes, fours, fives. Um, make them kind of varied so some are larger some are smaller some could be even larger and it just creates that extra effect of sparkle on her fin so go ahead and do that all throughout wherever in the middle on the side So when we're done with all our fabulous sparkles, I'm actually going to be painting the seahorse next. And I used the color Thalo Blue for the seahorse and a number four round brush. So I'm just gonna paint his head and nose and pretty much the entire shape that was painted with white. I'll be doing that with the Thalo Blue. So using contouring strokes that curve in the direction of the shape that's being filled in. So did his tail around in a spiral. So just filling that shape in, we will be blending in some other colors here in just a little bit. 
we'll be blending titanium white in there. And then, so with that white, I'm gonna kind of drag it out on my palette and pretty much mix the white with the blue. It's gonna make a light blue. And I'm gonna use that light blue. I'm gonna get it even lighter here. I'm gonna use that to make the belly part. So I'm just pressing on my brush to form um, the shape of his belly. And then his back tail fin, I'm gonna change the color up a little bit and use some turquoise in there. So that's the aqua color. And then I'm grabbing a little bit of that phthalo and going back over it just to make it a little bit darker and stand out. So I'm just dragging the brush outwards. Then um, have a towel handy to wipe your brush off in between changing these colors up. And so I'm just using that white to do the spikes on the edge of his back. I'm just doing curved strokes that kind of go to a point and to create those little spikes on his back. Just with the titanium white, we can have it go all the way to the, for the most part, to the end of his tail on the bottom. And then I'll make his belly a little bit lighter with more white. Little dot of white for his eye. Little highlight on the top of his nose. Little curve on the end of his nose. And then we can go ahead and paint our fish. So our fish was done with dioxazine purple and some titanium white. So I did the middle circle part with the purple, grabbed some white on my brush, and I'm just kind of letting that white blend with the purple to create some variation in that purple. So it doesn't have to be super de detailed. It's a small fish that's kind of up there in the background, or not really in the background, it's kind of next to the mermaid fin, but it's just tiny, doesn't really have to be um, super detailed. Making his body a little bit darker. And then I'm going to use my brush and load it with some of the uh, the phthalo blue and doing the curved lines on his belly and then Kind of make his eye a little bit bigger. Redoing some of the spikes on his back with the white. And doing some lines on his side fin so those kind of stand out a little bit better. touching up his head so it's a little bit more rounded, second coat on his body, and little purple dot for the eye. We're, we don't have Mars Black on our palette, but the dioxazine purple is super dark. We can use that for some of our dark. So I did a little dark circle for his eye. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is a little white dot on our fish. And I'm gonna continue with that white and I can go ahead and add my bubbles in there. So now that I have the placement of a seahorse and the fish, I can go ahead and do all my circles wherever I want the bubbles to show up at. So you can do a lot of variety of um, circles, so small ones, big ones. You can even do more dots if you wanna do that. So little dots kind of all throughout. And then the next thing I'm gonna show you are the mermaid scales. So if you look at the finished version of this, we have um, some of the mermaid scales are painted in. So I'm actually going to go ahead on my palette and make some fun colors. So I mixed some blue with purple and white here. And the one suggestion I can give to this is just to kind of have fun. So you have a limited color palette, but you're able to mix colors together. So use your aqua, use your phthalo, use your turquoise, use your white. Um, I don't I wouldn't recommend using the green. It might You might get muddy colors if you use the green. But you're just painting some of the scales in with different colors on your palette. So you're mixing different colors on your palette and you're painting clusters of those scales in. So 
Um, you can do a bundle of three together, a bundle of two, kind of all throughout. I don't recommend painting every single scale because that would kind of, um, I don't even know if that would look good, but it would take forever to do that. And you would be losing that pretty purple base that we have for our mermaid fin. But this just kind of makes it look like her scales are color shifting or the lights hitting them, glistening in, in a different direction. And it really creates a pretty effect. Plus, it's fun to make up colors on your palette. So that's all I'm doing here. I'm just mixing different blues and purples and aquas together and the white. And each little scale is a, really a different kind of color. And so just pick a few clusters, paint them in. If you need to um, go back over after this dries, you can. You can go back over with your gold Sharpie and touch up the outline of the scales if you lost any of your outline. I'm gonna go silent here while I finish this step. This painting tutorial is basically coming to its conclusion. If you want, you can go in there and add some more bubbles all throughout your painting. You can do some more details, but that is it, my friends. This is the conclusion of how to paint a mermaid tail. I hope that you enjoyed painting with me too, and thanks for watching.